took a mobile first design with this solution by looking at how people interact and where they are, all the different circumstances, and we said, you know what, how do we help people stay more connected in the moment? How do we sit, help them stay on top of their day? And so our whole user interface is designed around that, getting stuff done. Let's take a look. Excellent. So let's get into the mobile demo. So here you can see my iPhone, and it works pretty much the same on Android. And you can see my Avai Equinox application. The first thing I like to do is move the application down into my main toolbar, toolbar area because this is my go-to application. So now, as I navigate my app, I can always access my Equinox experience. So I'm going to go ahead and start the application. And the first thing that happens is you notice that it's, a lot, it's prompting you to allow access to certain things like notifications, microphone, uh, calendar, contacts. Uh, later on, it's actually going to ask me for video uh, as well once I start using the camera. Of course, I'm going to accept our user license agreement and get going. Now, the first step is that it asks you to enter your email address. And I'm going to go ahead and type that in. And what this is doing is it's saying, OK, where can I go and get the uh, configuration information for this user automatically so they don't have to enter any um, information manually. Of course, if you want to, if, if you're not set up for this, you can do it manually by uh, pressing, tapping the gear icon, but this is obviously recommended because mobile users expect a very auto, uh, a magical experience. Uh, in our case, we have different profiles set up, so I'm going to go ahead and se select our location. Um, most customers won't have that step. You know, it's just one place to go and, and access it. Um, so next is you'll see that I'm prompted for my enterprise credentials. So what happened was the first step is I found the server on avaya.com, and now I'm going to connect to the server by entering my enterprise credentials. The server knows who I am, and it's going to pull all my configuration up automatically. Okay, so with my password in, I'm going to tap on next. And what, what's happening now is it's going getting my personal configuration information. And of course, uh, the la app is loading. First, dis first thing I need to do here is accept this disclaimer about emergency calling. Um, so I go ahead and do that. I'm presented with an in-app tutorial. And most of us just skip sk or press skip <laughs> um, and then try to go and find the tutorial later. So in this case, I'm going to go through the tutorial real quick. And uh, it's, it's a nice introduction to the app, and you can go back and view it later. You'll notice, though, the application is fully running at this point. It has my profile information all populated in. You can see um, the chats that I um, have, the um, activity around. So Brad and Kirk, for example, sent messages to me. I have missed calls. All of that information followed me. Even my presence uh, is up to date there. Um, so let me just um, start by saying that this is our the main page that we have is called Top of Mind. And this Top of Mind page, you can actually personalize it by tapping on the, um, the Top of Mind uh, icon itself. And I can configure the calendars. And I can even go into this uh, Modify view um, by selecting Top of Mind, turning the Top of Mind view off. And when I do that, um, the UI looks more like a traditional endpoint. This is very useful, actually, for uh, tiled floor applications, so people that are not really calendar driven. They want access to their dial pad, their contacts, as well as their messages and their directory search. Um, so for me personally, um, I'm more of a knowledge worker, so I like the top of mine on. I'll go back into the calendar view. And so this, the intent here is how do we keep uh, people more um, effective um, by providing an action-oriented uh, user interface. So these are the, the next meetings that I need to be in. These are recent chat information, recent call history, voicemail, access to the directory so I can go ahead and, and, and search um, in the directory. And, well, and I can, uh, even while I'm doing my directory search here, um, you can see that I, can, I have quick action so I can slide that over and initiate a call or a, video, a voice call, a video call, or send a chat. If I want to, I can tap on the full contact uh, that provides me additional information about the contact. Um, so full contact uh, integration, uh, which is very common. I also have a dial pad um, here that I can tap on. I can bring that up. You know, if you if you remember the number uh, of, that you're calling, uh, that's very handy. Of course, you can make point-to-point -point voice and video calls here. Uh, so let me go back to the main view. You'll notice that there's a um, a menu uh, icon with the three three lines. And so I can tap on that, or if I want, I can pull the menu out just by sliding 
uh, to the left of the application. And from here, I can switch views. I can go into my contacts view, my call history view, my meetings view, my messages view. If I have other calls that I want to move from devices to de uh, device to device, like active meetings, for example, or an active call, they also appear here. So I can go ahead and uh, easily move my calls around. OK, so in this scenario, I'm going to join a meeting, discuss web design, hosted by Brad Black, and includes one other uh, person. So let me have to Equinox client is getting me all set up. Uh, you'll notice that uh, in this case the video is paused by default. We do that when you're on a smartphone and we do so that the camera is not pointing around in all directions so you make other people on the bridge dizzy. Uh, so here I am. I'm in my video call and I can adjust my self view around. I can check out the roster. I have my roster controls and so I can uh, manage my uh, meeting quite effectively. You can see here that uh, Brad started to share some content, so the content appears in the top portion of the screen uh, with the video remaining on the bottom. And um, so we're reviewing the new web design for the Avaya Equinox launch and the Equinox experience, and everything looks great. Uh, of course, there's one question that I need uh, it to answer. We all face this, and so in our uh, multitasking selves, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my um, contacts page, and I need to find Kirk and ask him a a quick question. So let me go ahead and uh, switch to contacts and I'm going to find uh, Kirk. So this is going to go ahead and search all of my contact information that I have. There he is. And so I can uh, select the full contact card or just slide over to the right. Uh, send quick uh, Kirk a quick message. You know, hey. And by the way, while I'm doing that, you'll notice that I have this control. And so what this allows me to do is if, uh, if Brad asks me a question, I can just, you know, simply go off mute and um, answer him and then, you know, go back on mute. <laughs> and I can also see the content adjusting uh, in, the, in the meeting. So if there's something Im that looks important, I can just one tap go back into the meeting. Um, so that's the multitasking nature and with that mute button and the content slider uh, that follows you around your application so that you can stay very effective uh, in the meeting. And um, the last thing that I wanted to show you just, just quickly is that I also have moderator control. So I can go into the controls here, move my slider around again. Oh, Brad asked me another question. I can go off mute and answer him. Um, I have, I'm able to uh, do all my moderator controls in here. So for example, uh, turn on recording um, so that we can save this, uh, this meeting, uh, post it to our, our library, download it in MP4, or we can share it uh, directly from a web page um, to, to help other people get caught up. And you'll notice as well, there's a little red uh, icon on the uh, meeting indicating that it's being recorded uh, for participants. And so that's a very common uh, workflow. Uh, let's, uh, we'll end uh, this meeting and I'll show you another workflow. I'm just gonna switch back to my top of mind page and here we go for the next workflow. In this scenario, I'm going to show the persistent messaging capabilities of the client. And so you can see I've got a new, uh, an updated message here from Brad Black. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. Now the beauty of the persistent messaging is that I don't have to be online. And this, uh, all of my clients get updated automatically. Uh, and this also works for multi-party, like a group chat. And so what I have here is a conversation that we have ongoing. So I can go ahead and uh, reply to him. I think what I'll do is I'll just give him a couple thumbs up. And, uh, and away we go. If I wanted to, of course, I can uh, attach additional media from my camera. I can embed new audio, video, uh, so on and so forth. And I was so impressed with that. Actually, I need to call him uh, right away. And uh, so you can see the icons on the top, uh, voice and video. So I'm going to start a point-to-point -point video call. So one tap, and I pick uh, the contact information that from, and away we go. We'll see if Brad answers. Hey, how's it going, Brad? Great. Awesome. Uh, just wanted to thank you for the, the message, and I look forward to talking to you about that further. We'll talk to you later, Brad. And go ahead and end that call with Brad. And, um, and that's the beauty is that I can switch over to my desktop, my browser, any other application, and we can carry on that conversation. 
So this is a quick walkthrough of the, the mobile demo. Hope you enjoyed it. And please make sure to watch the next video uh, where we're going to show the desktop uh, version of this. Thank you very much, everyone.